Hey YouTube, it's Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here with another Alesis Nitro Mesh Programming Tutorial. Today's tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how to make a new metal drum sound, or more specifically like the band Slipknot. Uh, I've had several requests to do a Slipknot style drum kit, so that's what I'm going to do today. Now, if you're not familiar with Slipknot, I mean, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you are already, but, you know, honestly, I was not really that familiar with them other than seeing photos and hearing the name. I really didn't know that much about them or even know what they sounded like until people started asking me. And so since then, I've gone through and listened to quite a bit of their music. Now, as I understand it, they went through quite a bit of member changes throughout the years, and they've been around for a pretty long time. Generally, I think the drum sounds have remained pretty close to the same on at least most of the stuff that I've heard. I would say like newer records maybe sound a little bit more polished, but overall um, the sounds that they go for are a very uh, modern metal uh, type of drum sound where the bass drum is very clicky, you have a tight snare drum, uh, there's a lot of rack toms. Now of course this is going to be a little bit limited uh, to the Nitro Mesh, the pads that are available on the Nitro Mesh. I'm using my own custom set, but I'm still using the Nitro Mesh module. So what I'm playing here is actually going to be a even more limited than the Nitro Mesh pads because I only have two toms as opposed to three uh, that come standard on the Nitro Mesh uh, kit. But I can still program the other tom in the module, so I can still show you how to do all of that as well. Before we get started with today's tutorial, I want to give a quick shout out to my sponsor, DistroKid. DistroKid are an amazing service to get your music to all the streaming music services out there, such as Spotify, Apple Music, even TikTok and Instagram and things like that. Get your music heard by everybody on all the streaming platforms, all for one low annual fee. There's a lot of things that DistroKid does that the other services just don't offer. They give you lyric synchronization, and what that is is like if you're listening to music on Apple Music, and you want to know the, the lyrics of a song, you can put it on and see the lyrics scroll by as you're listening to the music, and I think that's a really, really great feature. They also have something called Hyperfollow, which is basically they give you a web page for your specific release, and it has the links to all the different streaming services right there on that web, web page as they're being released to those new streaming services. They just keep adding on there. So it's really, really cool. Um, I've used them myself and I'm really happy with what they do. I just think they're a great service. So if you want to get an extra 7% off the already low fee of only $20 a year, for DistroKid, and $20 a year actually gives you unlimited uploads. It's not like you have to pay for every single release. So it's a really great deal, and down below on my link, you'll get an extra 7% off of that price that is already really, really low. So anyway, check them out. Let's go ahead and get on to the uh, tutorial about Slipknot drums on the Alesis Nitro Mesh. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. And what we're gonna do first here is actually just pick a drum kit that kinda sounds sorta similar. Uh, to get started with, so let's just go ahead and listen to some of these kits. I'm guessing somewhere, like, probably like the first couple will probably be close enough to get started with. Yeah, I think I can start with this. So, um, okay, so let's just start with kit number one. So let's go ahead and first off, let's start messing with our kick drum. And like I said before, you know, this is already a bit close, but the Slipknot drum sound, you know, they're really, really powerful sounding, but they're very polished sounding. So we want a clicky kick drum. And what I mean by clicky is there's like a strong bit of attack on the front of the kick. And this one does have it, but let's see what else we have. So 17, that one sounds pretty good. 18 isn't bad. Ooh, 26. Okay, that one may be our winner. All right, yeah. Okay, let's go to 26. And I might want to... Let's turn our pitch up a little bit. Just one notch, okay? All right, so now let's go to reverb and 
Yeah, a little less reverb just to make it stand out. So I'm going to set reverb on about three. Because reverb can kind of muddy up sounds sometimes. And like, uh, it's not that the Slipknot drum sound is dry. It's not really dry. Dry means no effects. But it's still, you know, it stands out a lot. You can hear every little, like, hit of every single drum because everything has so much attack. So... And if you put a lot of reverb on there, it can sometimes bury that attack. So it's kind of good not to use too much. So I think that sounds good. So let's use that one. And now let's move. Let's go back to uh, NUM. Oh, and I forgot to mention, too. To do this, you just start pressing voice uh, to basically change your different. What you're going to do is first hit your pad. You can either actually hit the pad that you're playing, you know, like how you play it. Or you can do it on the module like I'm doing it right here, which is just by pushing. Uh, the corresponding button. So I'm just pushing the kick button right there, and then that makes the kick sound. So, okay, so now let's move on to the snare. So that snare doesn't sound right to me at all. Uh, neither does that. Wait, let's go back. Uh, 54. That one's kind of close. 55, maybe if we change the pitch. Nope, nope. 60 isn't bad, but it's not quite powerful enough. Eighty five isn't too bad. We're into electronic snares now, so I think we're gonna have to go back down. All right, yeah, let's go back. What was it, 54? There's a lot of snares in the Nitro module, actually. That one, actually, I think is pretty good, but let's mess with it a little bit. So let's go into volume, crank that sucker all the way up. And then let's go to pitch. That's too high. It's not bad. I, I'm not in love with it, though. I think it's kind of there. Let's see what else we got. Too much reverb. Like some of these already have reverb on like just the sample. 55, but that one's almost too sharp. That's my problem with a lot of the rim shot snare sounds on the module on the nitro module is they they're too they're too sharp. It's like you're hitting on the edge of the drum almost. But let's see if we can mess with that one a little bit. Oops. pretty good all right let's go with that because we're going to mess with eq a little bit later too i think that one will work so kick once again let's go over them real quick kick is number 26 with pitch up one and snare is 55 with pitch down two and you know i'm only it's not like i have like a real science to this i just like use my ears and like go by what I think it sounds like and then you know I just try to program something accordingly so that sounds pretty good let's move on to toms and these toms are already I mean those already kind of sound like them to me so we may be able to leave those Maybe make our floor tom a little lower. But there are some high toms in... Let's make them louder, too. Let's put them up to 30 each. Oh, and kick drum should be all the way up. 32. Snares at 32. Put toms at 30. 
Yeah, okay, let's let's definitely see if we can get a lower pitch on the floor tom. Pitch, let's pitch that down. Yeah, like three down on the floor tom. Or that's tom four, actually. So you may, if you don't have it, that's if you have the additional tom. So let's pitch down. Let's pitch down all of them. Pitch them all three down. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Now, let's mess with the ride. Okay, the cymbals. That's one thing that I noticed about uh, a lot of the, the drum sounds for Slipknot is the cymbals are pretty quick. And they're pretty, uh, like, they're not real big sounding. They sound kind of kind of small on the smaller side and fast, even though I don't know if that's what they play. But that one, like, they have a clarity to them. That one's not right at all. Oh, wait. I get out of this. I'm in pitch still. So let's get to voice again. Something like that. Like that. Okay, let's say 228 for Crash 2. And maybe 227 for Crash 1. And then our ride, see if we can find a pingy metal type ride here. Oops. Not a lot of rides to choose from on the Alesis module. Okay, I'm thinking 219. I use that one a lot uh, for a lot of things, but let's change the pitch. Pitch. Oh, we need to mess with our pannings, too. And reverbs. We'll go through all that. I missed pitch. Okay. Pitch. Maybe go up two. Now, unfortunately, there's no bell. There's only one ride symbol on uh, the Elise's Nitro that has a bell, but it's not even dual zone compatible. It just depends on how hard you hit it. So I'm not going to worry about that. That sounds pretty good. Okay, now hi-hats... Like I said many times, the hi-hats on the Alesis Nitro module are not very good. So, these ones sound appropriate. You know, we can't expect to have great sounding hi-hats on the Nitro. It just isn't going to happen. So what I always do is I just turn them down. Let's go to volume. And let's put these guys down to like maybe 15. 16. So let's hear how this sounds. I'm going to play on my kit too later, but I'm just programming here. I can't even play like this. Okay, the kick drum, I feel like that's great. The crashes. I think it's pretty good. All right, let, now let's see our reverbs. So let's go in back into each drum. We already did the kick. So let's go to our snare. Go to reverb. Yeah, six is way too high. So let's take that down to two. I'm just going to put it all on two. Let's go two. 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 Well, except the hi-hat. And the reason why is the hi-hat, since it doesn't sound that great, sometimes the reverb can help it kind of mask its uh, fakeness. <laughs> I still want to... Okay, well, let's mess with EQ. Oh, I forgot to do rim. So, 
Now this will depend on how you have your kit set up. When I used my, uh, like when I had the nitro pads, I had my snare pad set at, on my Tom 2 position so I could use the rim as a rye. But if you don't have that, I personally would set the rim the same as the snare, which is what? 55. So let's go to 55. And then let's just make sure it's the same pitch. Oops. Okay. And then also, one thing you can do, oh, let's turn down the reverb. Volume, let's put the main snare down to 30, and then we'll do the, the rim. This is if you're using the dual zone on the snare. We'll put the, the 32 volume on the rim. So it's just a little louder when you hit on the rim. Okay. So that is that. And now, what was I? Oh yeah, EQ. So let's go ahead and save first. Let's press save button. And I'm going to save this in user number 26. You can put it in any, anything above 25 is where you can save. So just press save and then select where you want to save it and then press save again. Okay, so we've got it in uh, number 26. And now what I want to do is mess a little bit with the EQ. So let's go into kit. Keep pressing kit until you start seeing EQH. I'm going to turn up the highs a little bit. Just give a, even more attack. And also I'm going to turn up my mids. That's too much. Okay, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, lows should be okay where they are the thing is with low like i know people like to they like to feel the bass but the thing is when you go to mix music if your lows are up too high uh it just sounds muddy but let's see what we can do with it though maybe turn up a little bit just one we'll just turn up one and let me do this again i want to go back to the highs eq high i'm still going even higher Okay, eight is too much. Six. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's save that. And I think we have our Slipknot kit. All right, I'm going to set up now and uh, play a little bit. I'm not gonna play to any Slipknot songs. Unfortunately, I can't do that because of copyright claims on my channel. Uh, but maybe what I'll do is record some like heavy guitar or something and play along with it. So at least we can kind of get some kind of idea uh, how this will sound with some heavy distorted guitars. So anyway, here we go. Everybody, that's going to be today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the like button and the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload new content. I do a lot of music tutorials and just music related content on this channel in general. As well as, you know, songs and recording tips and all kinds of stuff. So definitely subscribe. And definitely check out my sponsor, DistroKid. Uh, they're a really, really great service. I can't recommend them enough. 
And uh, like I said before, there's a discount link down below. You can also stream all of my music on Apple Music, Spotify, every other service that's out there, thanks to DistroKid. And uh, yeah, so do that if you get a chance. Just search Demonic Sweaters on your favorite streaming service, as well as Manasota, which is my other musical project. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see y'all really soon. Later. <laughs>